you won't even hit 15% of what this bike's capable of on the street safely. I feel like I'm, I'm riding a thoroughbred racehorse at like a pony track, you know? It just doesn't make sense. Oh, what is going on, everybody? It's a good day. Oh, is it a good day. Today is a great day because we are doing my very first ride and impression on this, our brand new giveaway motorcycle, the Yamaha YZF R1. This is a brand new, there's a fly in my face. There's a brand new 2019 Yamaha R1. Why am I giving away? Well, it's part of our brand new expert bike giveaway series. So if you guys know, we've been doing the giveaway bikes for a while now, focused it primarily on beginners. And this last round, we threw in the street triple as a bit of a wild card. And I started seeing some comments being like, hey, you know what, Yami, the street triple is not a good beginner bike. You should probably not give that away. Um, but then I started seeing more comments of people that wanted nicer bikes and faster bikes and cooler bikes, because not everybody that watches my stuff is just getting into riding, even though it's a big portion. And so I was like, you know what? Let's start up a new sweepstakes. Let's do something different, and let's get a freaking badass R1 on the channel. Oh, guys, I got to tell you, this thing absolutely tugs at my heartstrings. Um, my very first motorcycle was a red Yamaha R3 in this exact same red color, and I've always lusted after the R1s. I just think they're the coolest leader bikes. The sound that they make, the look that they have, the aggressive styling, the racing pedigree, the heritage. I mean, it's just got it all, man. It's, it's just such an interesting and amazing motorcycle. Um, and today we're going to take it out on my very first ride ever and just give you my impressions of the bike. But if you want the chance to win this R1 for free, hit the link down below, go to yamynoob.co and sign up for the Expert Bike Giveaway Series. That's going to be your best chance to get entered for this motorcycle. If you don't want to do that, if you don't want access to our Discord server and all that kind of cool stuff, you can always go to yamynoobmerch.com, pick out anything you want, every dollar you spend gets you an entry to win, and then at the end at checkout, there's a small link in the email you're gonna receive after your order confirmation that will ask you where you want your entries to go. If you want them to go to the Beginner Bike Giveaway Series, you can put them towards there. If you want your entries to go to the Expert Bike Giveaway Series, you can put them towards this. Or if you wanna split them equally, you can do that too. So hit the link down below, order something up, and then at the end, when you get your email confirmation, there's a link that will ask you where you want your points to go. Without further ado, let's jump on this motorcycle. I'm dying to ride it. Got it turned on already because I did want to show you guys these awesome running lights. Oh, that is cool. All right, let's get her started. Brand new motorcycle, so stock exhaust still. You can hear that powerful cross plane crank churning away. It's just a monster, dude. Absolute monster. Let's jump on it and give you my first impression, shall we? So this bike comes equipped with a quick shifter up and down, all kinds of electronics to allow you to dial in your level of traction control, stability control, your power outputs. It is an incredibly advanced motorcycle compared to the stuff that I normally ride. <laughs> um, even my race bike, my 675R, has no electronics on it. Uh, it's a pretty bare bones motorcycle, just comes with a cable actuated throttle and it's ready to go. But these new suite of leader bikes, man, they are just so advanced nowadays. Um, I've gotten the chance to ride BMW's S1000 RR, the 2020 model, out in Jerez last year. Uh, I've ridden a ZX10R on track as well, and I got the chance to ride a cool analog old school KTM RC8R out at uh, Road Atlanta last year as well. So I've got some familiarity with leader bikes, but not a lot on the street, honestly. I haven't really ridden leader bikes on the street very much. That was like 20% throttle. Woohoo! Yikes! <laughs> I didn't think it'd wheelie at 30% throttle. Holy moly. 
So we are in A mode right now. Power is at one, TCS is two, and SCS at one. I believe that A mode is the full bananas, if I remember how Yamaha sets these up. I think D mode is your rain mode, and A mode is your full bonkers banana mode. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure that's correct. So first thing I'm noticing, you know, it's a very aggressive riding position. This is just, you know, it's a super bike, super sport class. So you're fully leaned over, your butt's way up high in the seat. You just want to go fast all the time. It feels like everything is slow. It feels like you just want to rip through every bit of traffic here. Yeah, I gotta believe that's full power. Then again, I don't know. It's not pulling super hard. A mode might be the weak mode. Maybe D mode's the full bananas? Because Yamaha sets these up kind of backwards. I know that the, the MT-09 A mode is crazy mode. And then on the MT-10, I think D mode is the crazy mode. So let's, let's switch the mode here, shall we? I'm working a computer here, guys. Uh, I gotta use my thumb over here, I think. Nope, that cycles through that. <laughs> it's, there's so much whiz-bang going on with this thing. I don't even know how to work it. Maybe like this. No, I can't switch the modes. And if I press the mode button, it just shifts me through power and TCS. Maybe we gotta do it while we're stopped. As you can tell, I'm not used to having a bike with this much electronics on it, so I <laughs> don't even know where to start with it. Uh, and that's, again, you know, my reference point for this is the Hayabusa, which is hilarious. And this could not be more different than the Hayabusa, man. It just absolutely shreds. It doesn't really feel like a crazy, you know, hardcore motorcycle like the Hayabusa. The, all that power and all that low down torque. But, uh, you know, it's still unbelievably fast. Even in A mode, which was, I think, rain mode. So let's get it in at least B or C and see how it feels. These brakes uh, with this Nissan Master cylinder right up here uh, and the way the lever's set up, extremely touchy. Uh, I like a little bit more pull on my brake lever, so if I were to keep this bike long term and take it on track, that's definitely what I would do. Um, or I could set the lever up to be a little bit closer to give me that, that initial bite, because right now I go to grab it and it just, boom, it's right there. Oh, let's see about switching the mode here. Oh shit, gotta go back. Mode. Okay, let's let's go to let's go to C mode and see how it feels. Actually, let's go to D mode. Screw it, full yeet energy. Let's see if we can feel the almighty power. The thing that's shocking to me, and I'll say it again, is just how docile it feels when you're just moseying around. Um, it's a phenomenal testament to what Yamaha has done with this bike and how amazing leader bikes are nowadays. That, like, for an experienced rider, someone who has maybe like a year under their belt. If you have any semblance of throttle control, you won't instantly kill yourself on this motorcycle. You'd have to be very dumb and really want to go fast. Because right now, you know, I'm just, I'm literally just cruising along. This feels like a regular bike. And that's really saying something. Versus the Hayabusa that feels like, it just feels fast all the time. And no matter what you're doing, it feels just crazy. This feels really normal. Um, I'm just cruising along here, 40 miles per hour. Like, even though the ergonomics are super committed, if that's something you can live with, I mean, this could be a, a bike you could use every day if you hated yourself and you hated the ergonomics that much. Okay, D mode has to be rain mode. I'm getting, like, no throttle response. Yeah, this, this feels like a 600. So D mode has to be the chill mode because I'm not, I'm not getting any power out of this thing. Because I don't think Yamaha limits the power brand new from the factory. Uh, I think that's like a BMW thing. I, I think Yamaha gives you the full beans from the factory. Yeah, so we're, we're in second gear, 7,000 RPM. Yeah, that's no way that's an R1 power, dude. <laughs> no way full throttle with second gear at 7,000 does that. So we got to switch it back to A mode. It just makes the coolest sound. Um, and that's really something to be said about these bikes. They are just, you know, <laughs> motorcycles are emotional, man. These bikes look amazing. They sound super cool. I totally get why you would buy one, even if you're not gonna go on track all the time. Like, they're just awesome. You just wanna own it. But I still believe that if you wanna experience what this motorcycle can do, that this is designed for a racetrack. Uh, as someone who has 
quite a bit of track experience and has a uh, race prep bike um, this, this thing just wants to absolutely boogie. It's set up for you to just flick it in, have that razor sharp handling. Like, I can just tell, dude, this thing wants to absolutely shred. The way it darts into corners on these Bridgestone RS10s are really, really nice, too. But again, it's so committed. You have to be so willing to, when you jump on this thing, you're like, all right, we're, we're going to go have some fun. We're going to go do some damage. But I'm, I'm, I'm shocked at the flexibility of it. I, I really am. Uh, something like a Hayabusa, like I said, it just, you know, when you're on that thing, completely analog, 100 foot-pounds of torque, all that power, no modes, nothing. It, it, it feels like an animal. Whereas this is so refined. I mean, we've made so much progress in the last 20 years, but holy crap, I didn't think it was this much. It's been a while since I've ridden a leader bike on the street, and this is just incredible. It's incredible how smooth it is. Like, I don't really feel like this is insane, but it can be. That's the cool part about it. And I think the other thing that kind of goes unnoticed is the fact that you have all these electronics. Uh, Trickle-down technology from the track like that does a great job at saving your butt if you do something silly on the street, as much as making you look like a hero on track. So I think that's really cool, and I'd love to see more advanced TC coming onto regular street bikes as opposed to, you know, a $16,000 liter bike. There's so much performance on tap. It is just unreal. All right, let's get this sucker back into A mode so we can boogie a little bit. Okay, back into A. A has to be the full mode. I was wheeling with 30% throttle, so I mean, that has to be full power. Oh yeah, A, a mode is definitely the mode. <laughs> yeah, A mode's the mode, baby, for sure. But again, I have to wonder, you know, if this is your, your daily ride. This is all really exciting because it's my first time riding this thing. But this would get really old really quick for me personally. Um, I like bikes that are a little bit more comfortable to ride on the street and a little bit easier going. It, this is unbelievably committed. You, you got to really want it. You got to really want to do it with this bike. And it just, uh, you know, it really belongs on a racetrack. It's a super serious motorcycle, but I'm, I'm very impressed. By how flexible it is. The throttle response is great. It feels really natural, it feels really good, um, which is saying a lot because most of the Yamaha ride-by-wire bikes have a weird kind of glitchy throttle feel to them, but maybe these maybe these new generation R1s, they, they finally solved that because this feels perfectly natural and balanced to me. Why do I feel like I'm gonna get a speeding takeout on this thing without even realizing it? Holy moly. And that's why you gotta look ahead and be careful, guys. Always look where you're going. Never speed when there's a ton of traffic like that. Be ready on the brakes. And that's why beginners shouldn't get this bike. <laughs> Honestly, which, what just happened right there is why if you're a new rider, you shouldn't get this motorcycle. Because if you weren't paying attention to that car that just came into your lane and you're doing, you know, a buck 20, you're smoked. It is just rapid. The way it picks up speed is ludicrous. And it's it's easy to go to do that in a straight line. And the, the problem will happen if you live in an area that actually has twisty roads and you're gonna go out and have fun with this thing, you could very easily get into a situation where you're between corner from corner and you're doing twice the speed that you thought you were because these gears are so long and you have damn near 200 horsepower at your disposal. I, I could 100% see that. Uh, this is this is a very serious bike, guys, uh, and I really don't think it's an appropriate second bike. Even if you're if you're coming off a Ninja 300 or something, this is a lot of bike. This is basically a tool for professionals to use at the racetrack or like aspiring track day junkies. But it it's serious, you know. It's very serious. There's just nowhere to really roam with it, you know? One thing I do like is that it's got good passing power, obviously, compared to something like the MT-07 or even my Daytona that I used to ride on the street. You could be in fourth gear and just, you just pass anybody you want at any time. Uh, and the low end torque, it feels prodigious. It feels weighty and meaty and it's got a lot of power down low, but it's not something that it's gonna feel insane like the Hayabusa, for sure. <laughs> this is 
a lot of performance. Holy moly. Yeah, it doesn't like it's crazy. It doesn't matter how often I ride the Hayabusa or the times I've ridden leader bikes on track. Their, their top end pull never ceases to amaze me that you can get this much power out of a 998cc engine. But it comes at a cost, you know? We're at 5,500 RPM and you know, I give it throttle. You have to wait for it to pick up. It's not gonna, you know, blow your mind out right now in front of it. Let's get in front of this guy. Keep our vision up here, guys. You wanna make sure that you don't get chopped up while you're on your R1. You have to be so prodigiously careful with this thing, dude. It's just unreal. It's, oh my god, this thing's ridiculous. I want to do some low gear tests with it. I want to see what it does in like fourth or fifth gear going like 40, just just for fun. Uh, because the Busa still feels insane at those kind of lower revs. It's got all that pulling power, but I, I have a suspicion that this is going to feel relatively tame, which is saying something. God, I love that soundtrack so much. But this is the difference. This is the difference right here. Cruising along, 15, 20% throttle using your quick shifter, and it's a normal motorcycle. It's not big, it feels light and nimble. I can just take this around town. Like, that's unbelievable that it can do this. Unreal. I'm just moseying along right now. It feels totally chill. Does not feel like I'm on a super bike right now. It feels like I'm on an R6 or something. It doesn't feel crazy. Even if I whack it and give it some throttle, it wakes up a little bit, but not, you know, it's not going to rip your hair off. And with quick shifter up and down, it's just a big old scooter, isn't it? It's just a nice little, little red scoot. <laughs> oh boy. It is shocking how little of the performance you can access on the street. Um, absolutely shocking. What else can we talk about? Um, one thing I am noticing is I do, I do wish that Yamaha included just, just a little bit nicer uh, specs on the base model machine. Uh, this bike has a Nissan master cylinder and uh, you know the off-the-shelf Yamaha brake discs and calipers. But you know I really, I really wish that the base model R1 came with Brembo's. I don't understand why it doesn't. Uh, or just, you know, some some calipers that actually have the Nissan logo on them that aren't these, you know, kind of base-looking calipers. It's little things, you know, if I'm going to spend, I think the Spike MSRP is at 17.5. I'm going to spend 17,000, nearly 20 grand out the door for a motorcycle. I want calipers that actually say something on them. I want levers that look nicer than what I got on my R3. These are literally the same levers I got on my R3, dude. Why can't you give me nicer levers, Yamaha? The turn signal indicator right here. Same squishy little floppy turn signal indicator you get on the MT-07. Uh, the only thing that's really nice is you get an adjustable lever over here for the brakes, but again, KTM does both levers adjustable on the 390. Um, so it's just stuff like that that really makes you understand where the money went to on this motorcycle, and it's the chassis and the engine. You're paying all that money for the chassis and the engine on this bike. Um, that's it. And the pedigree and the performance that, that can bring. Because, uh, you know, I, I think that Yamaha sells you this bike understanding that if you're serious about the sport of motorcycling, you're going to change all that out anyways. You're not going to keep these stock clip-ons. You're not going to keep these stock levers. You're going to get rid of these weird stock mirrors that look really odd and can quickly be disconnected right over here. Um, I think that Yamaha knows these things and they will help you, you know, kind of guide you along the way of what you should do with this bike. Another key sign is like you only got one bolt right here for the gas tank because they probably know that you're going to be taking it off and on again to do power commanders and maintain it and do stuff to it. Uh, a lot of this is, you know, with prep with racing in mind. Um, and it's, it's so good out of the box, dude. Like, you don't really even need to do anything to this bike to just have something that is just... The, the level of performance is... I cannot even explain to you how ungodly capable this motorcycle is in every capacity. It'll do 186 miles per hour. It'll shred any racetrack you throw at it um, with ease. And it'll make you look like a hero all while you do it because of all these electronics. And it sounds so f cool. Like, listen. That's so sick, dude. Boy, oh boy, is this a good bike. 
that soundtrack never gets old. It just sounds so exotic, so highly tuned, so bespoke, you know? And I know that it's not. Yamaha prints out thousands of these engines year over year, but it makes you feel like it is. It makes you feel like it's, you know, unique and you're the only one that has the sound. And it just, it's so good. It's so different from a regular inline four. But it is crazy how in regular traffic, you just feel like you're poodling around with it constantly. And some guys want to do that, you know? Not everyone wants to go and take their R1 to 10 tenths on the racetrack, but I feel like I'm, I'm riding a thoroughbred racehorse at like a pony track, you know? It just doesn't make sense. One thing that it needs, I love the cutout on the tank here. God, you could really shred with this bike. Um, the one thing that it needs is tank grips like every other super sport motorcycle, like every other sporty bike. Uh, the paint is just so slick that you just end up sliding right off this thing. You don't have a good connection with your outside leg whenever you're about to corner or something. And when you start braking, your nuts slide straight into the tank. So having uh, tank grips would definitely be the way to go with this bike. You know, it's interesting. The only place where this bike feels dated, other than these controls and that kind of stuff, is this screen. Although it is highly advanced, it's super small. I can barely read some of the numbers that are on there. This is like a like a four inch LCD. It's not, I don't think it's a TFT. It is colored, so maybe it is a TFT, but uh, I, can, I can barely see this thing. I'd like it to be just a little bit bigger, and I hope on the 2020 they made it a little bit bigger because it is kind of hard to read. The S1000RR, the new one, has a much larger, much more readable screen. Uh, but to be honest, I would like a smaller screen like this and then just give me super relevant information in a bigger font and then give me an analog tachometer. Uh, that's, I think, the ideal for me. Yeah, this bike's really hard to ride without tank grips. <laughs> it's like I'm sliding right off this thing. Not impossible, it's just a little bit more difficult. Okay, we're clear for takeoff. <laughs> Christ, man. First gear is just wheelies, no matter what you do. Yeah, the other thing about these bikes is I know a lot of guys get these and like, oh, I'm gonna start doing track days. This is a terrible bike to learn how to go fast on the track. You'll feel like you're going really fast on the straights, but it's so unbelievably capable that you're not gonna really explore what it's gonna be able to do. Like, if you really wanna start to learn how to go fast on the track, get a Beater 300 or a Beater 600, and that's gonna teach you everything you need to know with a much higher margin for error than this thing. This is, I swear to God, this feels like a tool for professional riders. This is a serious motorcycle to take to its true limits. I'm gonna run this nice and careful here on Lime Creek. There's always folks doing dumb stuff over here. I'm gonna run a nice smooth pace with this bike. It's laser guided, man, it's crazy. Also, it's crazy, you can just stay in second gear for this whole road. It's unbelievable. This thing's got so much performance on tab. Break a little bit. You have so much grip. <laughs> All right, got a 20 mile per hour here. Down into first, even though we really don't need to. We really don't need to be first right now. Get it up to second again. Keep in mind, guys, we're on the street. Nobody's pushing for lap records on the street, all right? It's a serious motorcycle, man. You can get in so much trouble with this if you're not careful. I, ca I cannot stress to you enough, guys, do not, do not get one of these bikes if you're not experienced. If you just have like a year on a 300, if, you, if you're, God damn, this is such an inappropriate motorcycle. Also, I am not used to riding a super sport for a prolonged period of time, and my back is roasting right now. Uh, I have a torn ligament in my T5, which means that I can only ride these types of bikes for 20 to 30 minutes at a time uh, on track in an aggressive way without feeling like I want to absolutely kill myself. <laughs> That's like 30% throttle, dude. Jeez, man.
Like, I know it doesn't look like it, but I'm literally going the speed limit right now. Doing about 40 miles per hour. This is the speed limit on a leader bike, guys. <laughs> this is not what I would call fun. Definitely not. Yeah, I'm, j I'm just absolutely shocked by the level of performance. And just the fact that, yikes, I need some tankers, man. I keep hitting my nuts in the tank. Uh, I'm just shocked at how, you know, you really can't get close to what this thing can do anywhere anywhere like you won't even hit 15 percent of what this bike's capable of on the street safely uh like i said i'm literally doing the speed limit right now i'm doing second gear 4000 rpm this is this is the speed limit on an r1 this is riding legally oh all of a sudden i'm speeding now see this this is what i'm saying these bikes are just overkill like you're just not going to learn on this thing that, that's what i keep coming back to is um you know, if you want to learn the craft of riding and you want to learn the actual art of cornering and all that stuff, this is a terrible tool to learn that. <laughs> this is a terrible tool to learn how to go really, really fast or to have a competent and safe riding ability because the margin for error just doesn't exist. And at any moment, you just, you're doing 60 like that. And again, guys, it's not that I don't like leader bikes. I think they're amazing, but they have to be ridden in the right context, you know? Just like if I took a dirt bike out here on these twisty roads, I'd be like, oh, the grip isn't there, this thing's wonky, the front end feel is weird. It's in the wrong environment. Whereas I think this motorcycle on the street is in the wrong environment. Just because it has headlights and mirrors, yes, it means that it can legally go on the road, but is that where it's happiest? Definitely not. 100% not. And it's pretty exhausting to ride. Um, like, it's, it's not, like, it's fun when you absolutely get to rip on the throttle a little bit and you're like, wow, the level of performance it has is unreal. But that gets old. I mean, it's not that different from the Hayabusa in that sense of, you know, it's a cheap thrill. It's a more expensive thrill than the Busa, but a cheap thrill nonetheless. I have more fun on that road on my desert sled than I do on this thing, for sure. But once I get this thing on a racetrack, I'm sure I'll feel different. I'm sure when I do a back-to-back -back comparison for this in my 675R, I'll be like, dang, this thing is super fun. It can hold the line like nobody's business. And it can do that, you know? But on the street, that's just really sketchy. You got things like that, crossing the line. You got people coming. You got dogs. You got trees. Uh, it's, it's a really bad idea to try to go fast on a leader bike on the street. They are extraordinarily capable. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up my thoughts on the uh, R1 here. My very first ride on it, taking it out some twisty roads, some highway, cruising around with it. Unbelievable motorcycle, like extraordinarily capable, highly advanced, really, really cool riding experience, but very much tempered by the right context. It is very tiring to ride. And unless you are uh, in perfect health, as I am not, I have a T5 torn ligament, uh, it's very, very tiring to ride as well. So keep that in mind, guys. Uh, definitely keep up to date on the channel. Check out yamnoob.co to find out how you can win this motorcycle. I know that a lot of you would love to have a bright, shiny red R1 in your garage. Uh, so click the link down below to yamnoob.co or go to the merch page where you can select after checkout which entries uh, you want to select for which uh, sweepstakes. So with that, I will catch you guys on the next one. See you later.